Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos, you got it, product review. Now today's review is being done in my garage because we're going to be reviewing the EcoFlow dual fuel generator. This thing will run on either gasoline or propane. Today we're going to go ahead and run it on propane. I'm going to show you what it comes with, how to set it up what kind of power it outputs at elevation. We're also gonna do some sound tests on it and we're gonna charge an EcoFlow Delta Pro. We did have some issues at elevation with the original gas model of this generator, but they told me that that is all fixed. We're gonna find out when we go to charge a Delta Pro today because we wanna know, is this thing any good? Let's find out. Okay, first we're gonna go over what it comes with and what it doesn't come with that you're going to need to supply yourself. So what does the dual fuel generator come with? Well, of course it comes with a handy dandy guide which will let you know what you need to do to set it up and all the maintenance. It comes with a spark plug, screwdriver, and wrench. It comes with a funnel with a hose to put oil in. They sent me this separately, but I think this is supposed to come with it. This is an adapter that allows you to use this cable with the Delta Pro. And one of the big complaints early on was that the cable they supplied originally was not long enough. This one, they didn't tell me how long it is, and it doesn't say how long it is in the book, but it looks pretty long. I'm gonna have to guess it's about 10 feet. And of course, they include a propane hose, which will let you hook up propane, which we're gonna do here in a bit. Now, what's not included that you're going to need? Well, you're gonna need oil. There is no oil supplied with the generator. You are gonna need a flathead regular screwdriver. You're obviously gonna need fuel. In this case, we're gonna do propane. And you're gonna need a mobile device in order to get into the setup of the generator itself to configure some things. Oh, and you're also gonna need a rag to clean up what is about to happen. First things first, take your regular standard screwdriver, pop it in these two holes here, and turn counterclockwise to unlock the side. Yes, you can use a coin or something similar. I find a screwdriver to be easier. The next step is going to be to pull this panel out, it takes a little bit of force, and that is gonna expose the guts. Now the user manual here says 10W40 oil, and I'm not gonna show you what kind of oil I'm using because I got some hell on my last generator video when I used oil that 100% uh, of the public didn't agree with. So I'm gonna put oil in this up to the limit, and then we're gonna go ahead and start it. So here's the oil fill cap. You just take this off, use the funnel with the hose, and stick that in there and then proceed to fill with oil until it comes out. Now this is where I use my rag because otherwise it is going to be a complete mess. That's gonna catch any overflow so that it doesn't go all over the place. So let's go ahead and fill this sucker up with oil and we'll be right back. Okay, you can see the oil is coming out. That means it is full. And it was a very good idea to use the rag because it allows you to clean up your mess. Now we're ready to add fuel and then we can start it. However, this does have an electric start. So they do want you to hook up the battery before you start it. So let's go ahead and hook up the battery. Okay, so this blue thing is the starter battery. So just connect these two together and that connects the starter battery up to the main system. Next step is to come around the side and turn on the ignition. So you can see now the power's on. It's saying there's no fuel, which of course there's no fuel. We haven't hooked it up yet. So that's just to verify that the battery is working, the ignition is on, everything should be ready to go as soon as we add fuel. Now for safety reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back off until you hook up the propane because propane is a flammable gas. So we don't want to have any accidents. Okay, the next step is going to be to hook up the propane, the included hose with regulator. We'll go ahead and put the regulator side on first. Now note this hose is not very long. It's maybe four feet. Now this side is a quick release. So it's got the spring loaded quick release thing on it. Now the propane hookup is right here. So let's go ahead and plug the propane in. Okay, it's solid. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now I only do a quarter turn because if there's an emergency, I wanna be able to turn it off quickly. I know there's a lot of controversy about how far to open your propane tank, but this is how I've been doing it for the last decade. And I've evaded an accident that way. Okay, propane is on, it's hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition on. Now, of course, for safety reason, you're supposed to do all the soapy water checks to make sure nothing is leaking. I'm not running this for very long. I don't want to obviously have a carbon monoxide issue in here. So according to the manual, it doesn't say you need to flip a certain switch to get it to run on propane, it just does it. 
I guess we're gonna go ahead and just fire it up. Hey! Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! And something I just noticed, it does say 99% fuel because it is hooked up to a propane tank. Now this propane tank's almost empty, so it's obviously not reading the pressure of the tank. It's just saying, okay, you got fuel. Now like we do with all these fuel power generators, we're gonna let you guys bet on how many pulls does it take to get this to start. Now I have not started it yet. This is gonna be the first time. It is turned on and ready to go. All I should do is pull the handle and find out. Now I could use the electric start, but that's cheating. I like to see how many pulls it takes to get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop. So place your bets. I say it's gonna take two pulls. Uh, we'll see. I've actually had generators start on the first pull or the fifth pull, so. Let's see. Place your bets, put them in the comments below. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna pull it slow, really slow just to make sure that there is propane in the cylinders. I don't smell anything leaking here, so we should be okay. Ready? First pull. Nothing. Second pull. Nothing. Third pull. Still nothing. I do have the propane on. Fourth pull. I felt like it was kicking over a little bit that time. Fifth pull. Oh, it's getting there. Sixth pull. Still nothing. Hmm. Seventh pull. Eighth pull. There we go, it took eight pulls. Well, that's a first. It did take eight pulls to get this started, but that's okay, it's, it's on propane. You have to expect there was probably some air in the lines. Now let's go ahead and do an electric start and make sure it fires up. Turn the power back on. Let's do an electric start. Propane is on. It started right up before. I didn't let it run for very long, but we got propane. All right, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna start it manually again. There's probably some air or something in the line. It's causing it to have a problem. Yeah. There's no problem with the pull start. It is very quiet. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop it and we're gonna try electric start right after. It should start right up because now there's propane in the line. Huh. Six and a half hours later. All right, I'm giving up on the electric start feature for now because it obviously is not starting automatically on propane. And I don't know why I can pull start it, but the electric start, maybe it's not spinning enough. Maybe the battery is dead. It needs to spin faster. Don't know, I'm not gonna waste any more time on it. I went through the entire manual, it doesn't mention anywhere that it won't electric start on propane. I'm guessing maybe the battery is low on voltage and it's not spinning the motor fast enough. I don't know, like I said. I'm gonna move on with this review because we have other things we need to test. Okay, let's go ahead and add the dual fuel generator to the app. The first thing you gotta do is press the IOT reset button while the power's on. Just gotta press this button right here, hold it in till it beeps. All you have to do is open the app. All you have to do is tell it to add device and it'll start searching. And it found a dual fuel generator right there. Then once you add your Wi-Fi to it, it tells you to bring the phone close to the device and it will install the internet basically on the device. Okay, so after several minutes of retrying, I finally got the thing to connect. Uh, it is checking to make sure that the firmware is up to date. So I do have all the latest firmware. Now you can start this remotely by swiping. Oh, there we go. Okay, for this next step, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this EcoFlow Pro, which is on the floor. This thing is too heavy for me to pick up, so I'm just going to plug it in on the floor. And like I said, this cable looks like it's about 10 feet long. They don't tell you how long it is in the, in the manual. So in order to do this, you're gonna to need to have this adapter, and I'm guessing they're gonna include this with the generator. They shipped it to me separately. It just allows you to plug into the battery port on the EcoFlow Delta Pro. Okay, so the battery port is on the back. Plug that in until it snaps. Then back on the front, this left door has the hookup for the cable. All right, so now we're hooked up to the Delta Pro. Oh, it's trying to start it automatically. 
So first things first, let's go ahead and go 21 feet away from this generator while it's running at idle at eco mode and see what kind of decibels we get. Super easy to start with a hand and I'm using a tape measure to make sure we're the exact distance away we need to be. There we are at 21 feet. So 59 decibels at idle at 21 feet. Now let's go ahead and add a thousand watt load and see how much louder it gets at the same distance. So 70 decibels, a 10 decibel increase at 21 feet. Let's go ahead and run it at maximum. Now when I say maximum, it's gonna be maximum for this elevation. I am at nearly 7,000 feet above sea level. That's gonna reduce the power output of this generator by about 20%. On propane, this generator maxes out at 1600 watts continuous. So we should be able to get around 13, 1350, 1400 before it starts choking. So let's give it a try. So the easiest way to do this is remotely with the app. So I don't even have to walk over there. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it in the settings. You can see right there it says discharge speed. I have it set at 1,000. Let's try 1,400. All right, 1,400. It definitely sounds like it's working harder, but it's working just fine. Now let's try bumping it to 1,600. That should be the maximum for this. Oh, and there it goes. It's, it's starting to have issues. So it says performance 1,800 watts, but the generator itself is still running just fine, but it's not outputting 1,800 watts. So you might be wondering what the heck is going on because I did tell the app performance mode 1800 watts, but the generator was limiting itself to 1350. It detected the higher load due to the elevation and self-adjusted. Now the old just gasoline only version of this did not do that. It was surging, acting all up. It would not hold a steady speed no matter what I tried. They obviously fixed that problem in the dual fuel version. Like I said, I'm close to 7,000 feet in Arizona. So running generators at high elevation without a carb kit, you're gonna get a lot less power out of them. We're still getting 1,350 out of this, out of 1,600, which is fa absolutely fantastic. Uh, 70 decibels at 21 feet isn't the end of the world. It's not the quietest generator. It's also not the loudest. Now this generator will output up to 1800 watts at sea level using gasoline or 1600 watts at sea level with propane. I'm not gonna bother doing a gasoline test on this because I already have a video on the gasoline model. It's pretty much identical to this except for that fix for the elevation. There's no point in wasting your time or mine putting gasoline in this, then I'm gonna have to drain it and everything for storage anyway. I know you guys just wanted to see how it runs on propane. That's the most important thing. Why would you buy a dual fuel generator if you're not gonna run it on propane? Uh, gasoline is kind of like a backup option because the cool thing about propane is it lasts forever. You can stockpile these 20 gallon tanks indefinitely. 20, 50, 100 years later, that propane inside the tank is good, where gasoline lasts six months to a year without treatment, give it some treatment, it might last up to two years. But two years isn't very long if you are living off the grid and stockpiling fuel, especially if you're worried about a crisis, shortage, or high prices. All right, I have one final test left to perform, and of course that means dun, 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 the solar degenerator. So I got this heater over here, which I'm gonna run at low, and then I'm gonna crank this up as far as I can and see what we get on the display. Now I know I already maxed out using the EcoFlow Delta Pro, but I'm doing this through the actual 120 volt outlet that is built into the generator. So let's see if we can push it harder than 1350 watts at 7,000 feet elevation. Yay! By the way, I do have this on performance mode. Watch this right here. 1450, 15, 1550, 16. 1650, 17. Wow, we're at 1800 watts. Oh, it's finally choking. Choking us back. Choking us back to 1600 watts. So I cranked this all the way. This is all the way up. Okay, overload. Woo, I even got a little backfire there. So wow, that's impressive. I actually hit 1800 watts for a few seconds there before it shut down. Remember, this is on propane mode. Starting right up now. So it's holding 1500 watts without much of a problem. It's even old 16. Yeah, still no problem. 
17. Finally, it kicks off. So there we had some very impressive results from this generator. I was actually able to push 1700 watts for about 30 seconds before it conked out. And it seems like I could have run 1500 to 1600 watts on propane pretty much indefinitely. So this generator outputs, I think, a little bit more than what they stay. This says 1800 watts on gas, 1600 watts on propane. Subtract 20% for this elevation. We shouldn't be able to pull over 1400 at all. But 15, 1600 watts at this elevation on propane is still, it's still chugging away just fine. So uh, double thumbs up to EcoFlow for figuring out the issue with this at elevation, because it is absolutely performing fantastic. I noticed too, running on propane, there's not a lot of exhaust smell, which is great because I hate the smell of generators. And it's been chugging along just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and run it another hour or two to complete the break-in process, and then I'll put it back in storage for a future video, I guess. So hopefully all this information will help you out making a purchase decision. Now, if you're interested in the EcoFlow dual fuel generator, there is gonna be a link below in the description along with a discount code. I don't know how much EcoFlow is giving me off of this generator, but I will have that below. I do know they are giving me a discount code for this at the time of this filming. Just look for it down in the description below. I'll also put a link down here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually that'll take you on over to the EcoFlow website where you can check this out and pick one up if you like. I'm also gonna put a QR code down here in the corner. You can scan with your mobile device. It'll take you to the same place. Don't forget to use that discount code because you'll get a significant amount off of this very nice generator. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And yes, this is part of my backlog. So if you're curious of what I'm working on next, yeah, I have a lot to do. RV Golf Guy. Von Rob. Brian Lieber. John Stacey Soroka. Dr. Steve Eisenhower.